The United States believes that negotiations should result in two states with permanent Palestinian borders with Israel, Jordan, and Egypt, and permanent Israeli borders with Palestine. Israel supports two-state solution, a Palestinian state side by side to a Jewish state. Uh, this has been the policy for the last two decades. Negotiations between, for, between Israel and Palestine for a Palestinian state have failed simply because Israel does not want a Palestinian state. If one side of a party doesn't want an agreement, doesn't want the end product of the agreement, no agreement will happen. Now, there are two reasons that Israel doesn't want a Palestinian state. One is it wants all the land. That's been clear since Ben-Gurion. And that's why even uh, the present government has chosen to expand settlements over going to peace talks. The other reason is that the Israelis fear a Palestinian state. They fear uh, both terrorism and a war from that state. And, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu in 2002 said that, uh, quote, a Palestinian state will be a threat to the entire state of Israel. Obama was pushing this idea that you know, territorial compromise was, was necessary to, to have a, and that no, a Palestinian state would not work unless it was a viable state. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty basic common sense uh, kind of position, but, but he, he was blasted for that. Uh, you know, Romney saying he'd thrown Israel under the bus and, and again you know, the, 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 the leadership uh, in, in the House of both parties signed a number of letters and passed a number of resolutions uh, that seemed to deliberately be tr trying to undermine um, Obama's stance. The Obama administration's policies towards Israel-Palestine started really good. On day two, he appointed Mitchell as his envoy, and they quickly pushed Israel for a freeze on settlements so that talks could get underway. Uh, but that move failed. It failed for two reasons. It failed because the Israelis didn't want to make a freeze, and they basically said no. But more important than that, they throw, it, it failed because Congress sided with the Israelis against their president. And so Obama was sort of caught between Israel, Israel on one side saying no, and Congress on the other side saying no. And in the United States, uh, Congress and, the, U, and the, the, the Congress and the administration have to be in parallel for there to be any progress. So that stopped. And Obama and the Obama administration fell into the mode of the previous uh, presidents, Bush and Clinton, in basically doing what Israel wanted. As with a, quite, quite a number of other issues, uh, the profound disappointment at Obama and the compromises he's made and, and, and various positions he's, he's taken vis-a-vis uh, -vis Israel, Palestine that are uh, anathema, not just to people who support the Palestinian cause and people who do just believe in human rights, international law, um, should not um, um, ignore the fact that uh, a Romney presidency would be profoundly worse.
The original Tea Party had rather strong libertarian and even isolationist sentiments. So these are not the kind of uh, conservatives that support uh, Netanyahu and the, and the uh, uh, a greater Israel and the, uh, the more hardline hawkish positions we usually associate with um, Republican politics. However, the, the conservative wing of the Republican Party has co-opted the um, Tea Party in a number of areas, in, including uh, the, the Christian right, which has increasingly come to dominate the Republican Party. Uh, and these include these dispensationalists who believe that modern Israel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy and that uh, a greater Israel is necessary for the second coming of Christ. Romney goes around saying that uh, Obama is not a good friend of Israel and he would be a better friend of Israel and oh, Romney has said he'll do the exact opposite of, of Obama. The vast majority of American Jews are not single issue voters. Uh, John McCain really tried to outflank Obama on the right uh, on the Israeli-Palestinian question in the 2008 election and yet Obama uh, received nearly 80 percent of the Jewish vote. Indeed, public opinion polls have shown that American Jews as a whole are actually closer to Obama's position than that of uh, Netanyahu and the Israeli government. Uh, so uh, by allying with the uh, uh, right wing in Israel, as Romney and the Republicans are, are doing, uh, they are, are, are not getting closer to the uh, uh, perspective of the majority of American Jews, but are actually uh, just you know, solidifying the right wing. The original Zionists and the PLO and Hamas all really want a single state that they control. And so they, they really are similar, but they've evolved very, very differently. Uh, Israel has basically got what it wants.
So to call, to say that there's a Palestinian people as a part from those that are in Jordan, especially, uh, this is not true to, to fact, and not true to history. On Israel, uh, do you consider yourself a Zionist? Well, I believe that the Jewish people have the right to have a state, and I believe that uh, the commitments that were made at a time, remember, uh, there, were, there, were, there was no Palestine as, as a state. It was part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, and I think that uh, we've had an invented Palestinian people. Because first and foremost, uh, there's never been a state called Palestine. We're talking about nomadic Arabs. Palestine is a region. And once upon a time, everyone who occupied that region had on their passport Palestine. There's always been a state of Israel. After 1948, we have a modern day state of Israel. So we need to respect that. And the people who call themselves Palestinians need to uh, have a right and a respect of that state of Israel. Until then, until there's a willing peace partner, there really can't be peace. Few men in Israeli politics today stir more emotions than this man, Danny Danon, the deputy speaker of the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. To his supporters, he's a patriot, a defender of the Jewish state, and a strong supporter of Israeli settlers. His opponents call him and his followers dangerous. If I was in charge, I would have built much more all over Judea and Samaria, because I believe it's ours. We don't need to get permission from anyone for that. Now, you've spoken in the past of annexation. Is that, is that what you mean, or is there more? I think it's one of the actions we should take. And annexing the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, I think it is a major step. And I would recommend the Prime Minister to endorse my initiative on that. But from everything that you have said so far, it would appear that you don't even believe in a two-state solution at all. Uh, to my perspective, the available Palestinian state is not acceptable. And there is a place only for one state uh, in uh, the land of Israel. I think the long-term solution will be a Palestinian entity that is connected to Jordan, and another Palestinian entity which connected to Egypt. I do not believe in a two-state solution. I don't think that, tran I think that transfer, moving the Palestinians out of the West Bank is a marginal idea. There are certainly Israelis who want to do this. And there are some of the Israelis who are part of the current government who want to do it. Uh, and there are many Israelis beyond that, uh, who you might call mainstream Israelis, who wouldn't be opposed to it. Interestingly, the Republican Party used to be somewhat more moderate than the Democratic Party when it came to Israel and Palestine. Republicans 
being influenced by oil interests that had been working in the Arab states for, for many decades, whereas the Democrats uh, had a lot of influence from liberals who had this very idealistic view of, of, of Israel, particularly from the labor Zionist period. But we've, we've seen a shift in recent years uh, within the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, liberals are willing to be more critical of Israel on human rights grounds, on because of their violations of international legal standards and the like. Uh, positions more akin to the uh, Israeli peace movement, whereas the Republican Party has been uh, taken over by the Christian right, who take a very, very hard line, and uh, and and, make, and and have, have been, been pushing the the kind of angle we're now hearing uh, from Romney and from the Republicans overall. Meanwhile, the well, rank and file Democrats are much more moderate on Israel than they used to be. The Democratic Party leadership, particularly in Congress, uh, is uh, is uh, barely distinguishable from the Republicans, uh, particularly the Democrats that uh, dominate the um, uh, respective uh, subcommittees of the House and Senate. And th th indeed, you can see that how they joined with the Christian right in attacking. Uh, Obama for his very modest uh, suggestions of uh, compromise uh, by the Israeli government. So, although uh, some parts of the Israeli government would look, really push for transfer and many people would accept it if it could be done, those people recognize that it would not be accepted. And that's why it hasn't been done even to this date. Uh, so I think that the idea of, of uh, transfer is marginal. There are, uh, uh, it, it's not talked about at all by the mainline Israeli parties, the Likud, the Kadima, and Labor. And it's not talked about by the, estab the, the main establishment Jewish American groups in this country, like APAC and the uh, ADL and the Conference of Presidents. In terms of their percentage of the American electorate, the American Jewish population is smaller now than it's been for more than a century. And more importantly, they have never been more divided when it comes to the issue of Israel. Especially among younger Jews, there are, there's not a particularly strong personal attachment to Israel, and where there is, uh, there's much more of a tendency to ally with the peace camp and not with the right wing that, uh, that currently uh, leads the Israeli government. Indeed, uh, w w I've never seen any issue except for uh, gay lesbian rights where there has been such a close correlation between age and political attitude. That is, the uh, younger uh, people are, and, uh, especially American Jews, uh, the more liberal they are, the more progressive they are, vis-a-vis uh, -vis their more uh, you know, conservative, right-wing, hawkish um, elders. No Zionist government will ever allow any part of the land of Israel to be taken away from the state of Israel. And what this means is that there will never be a Palestinian state. There might be little pockets of autonomy, as there are today, but there will never be a Palestinian state on any significant part of the land, because this is not possible. Many uh, or some, some or many peace advocates who are interested in Israeli-Palestinian peace have recognized that there can be no progress towards a Palestinian state alongside Israel with the current regime in Israel. And when I say regime, I mean both the government and the opinion of most of the people. And uh, these people, uh, some of these people, have jumped to the idea of a one state one democratic state in Israel-Palestine. And I think they've acted out of despair. But if we take a look at the last 60, 65 years, if we take a look at the Zionist history, if we take a look at everything that's happened in Israel since its establishment, it is absolutely clear that it is not realistic to expect Israel will give up any piece of the land or Israel will allow any kind of of real independent Palestinian political entity to emerge that is not under the control of the Israeli government. That is absolutely not realistic. That is not going to happen. Any expectation that Israel will allow 
a, a serious political entity that is a Palestinian political entity to emerge and will be independent is completely false. It's completely not realistic, unrealistic. Now, as we move forward, we realize that, or as, as, we, as we keep looking at Israel's approach to this, what's clear is that the only agreement Israel will ever, will ever assign is an agreement that gives Israel complete domination. Israel will determine who the partners for the negotiation will be. Israel will, be, will determine what terms are acceptable and not acceptable. Israel will determine how much of the land will be given. Israel will determine how much control the Palestinians will have over the land, over the water, over travel. And these are the only conditions under which Israel will sign some kind of a peace agreement with the Palestinians, which of course is not a peace agreement. It's an agreement to continue Israeli domination over all of Palestine. The notion that the two parties can sit together as equals and are somehow equal in any way, shape, or form in their regard to the land, in their rights, um, is completely, completely inconceivable as to, in, terms of, in terms of the Zionist thinking. We are morally, historically, politically, militarily, we always have to have the upper hand. We are superior to them in every possible single way, every possible way. And therefore, any kind of equality is not possible. And until equality is reached, there can be no negotiation. As long as Palestinians are under the gun, there, can, there will never be serious negotiations. And of course, there have never been serious negotiations, and that's why there's never been any result. The way the Israelis and Palestinians live together has to be decided by the Israelis and the Palestinians living there. That is the right of self-determination. That is not what Americans or peace activists in Europe or the United States should be concerned with. We should be concerned with assuring or trying to do our best to assure that international law and human rights are the basis of whatever agreement happens there. That's what our job is. Our job is not to be cheerleaders for one or the other kind of political arrangement. In the discourse within Israel, there is still a notion that, well, the there is a possibility to have, to, to have this two-state solution, this idyllic solution where somehow the Palestinians will have their, land, their country and we will have, the Jews will have their country and we'll all live in peace. What people f either fail to realize or refuse to realize is that that possibility no longer exists. There is no more possibility to partition the land of Israel. The two options that exist today for a solution are either the status quo, which means Israel will remain, Israel Palestine will remain governed and dominated by Zionist Israel forever, or a solution that allows um, all the participants, all the people who live on the land, to participate in creating the future for, for this country. In other words, a real democracy, a real pluralistic democracy where the state is divorced from the national identity of the people. The state governs and rules as a democracy. I personally would love that it be a single state between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, that's how I would vote. But my opinion doesn't count. I don't live there. And when I try to understand the politics of the government and of the people, I just don't see a single state happening. I see a single state uh, there, there's so much built up animosity between these people and there's such an economic disparity between the two so sides that I see as a Palestinian, a single state, uh, whether it's a one person, one vote state or even a federal state or a binational state, I see it leading to violence uh, and, and I see it as being a distraction to a real solution. I think a real solution has to be a Palestinian state alongside of Israel. This is the only way that both the Israelis and the Palestinians can express their identity in a state. History has shown us that as long as we remain focused on partition as the solution, we're doomed to fail. There will be no solution. Um, there is this notion by the Israeli left or by you know, some people in the Israeli left that somehow the, the settlements will be dismantled and even if, if the settlements are not dismantled, that Palestinians will somehow be given 
uh, lands in different parts of Israel as some kind of an exchange. But all of this, when you get right down to it, you realize is, is really not possible. None of this is possible. And as long as we remain focused on this two-state solution or the notion of any kind of partition, we're going to see the continuing of Israeli domination or Zionist domination on the land and on the people, the continuous brutal oppression of any attempts by Palestinians to assert their rights. And as we look at the Israeli prisons, we see that they are filled with Palestinian uh, activists.